hey guys you're welcome back to my youtube channel if you're here for the first time my name is Amelie Sedo and you're welcome for returning subscribers thumbs up thank you so much for staying with me and putting up with all of this so on today's video I promise to be very exciting so let me give you guys a sneak peek we're going to be meeting someone a young entrepreneur she was going to have to tell us her name when she comes <laughs> we're going to meet her she's um a stylist she's a fashion designer so she's going to be putting us through her journey how she started tailoring how she started making fabulous dresses and all that and guess what guys this young woman was nominated for the award of fashion designer of the year at the maiden edition the first ever edo feast which is going to be taking place today so before the event of which i'm going to film i'm going to have to film all that process but before that we're going to be meeting her and she's going to be answering a series of questions I actually wrote it down somewhere and she doesn't have an idea about it so she's going to be answering a series of questions she's going to be here she's going to just put us through her journey how it is how challenging it has been and all that so guys just keep watching <laughs> keep watching while i go and drag her in love you hey guys welcome and um she's here so we'll have to, she has to tell us about herself so can we meet you okay hi my name is silly blessing omoaluna and i am the owner of the brand luna apparels <laughs> project so i have a series of questions here that i'm going to be asking luna apparels and um, hopefully she's going to try or she's going to answer them truthfully to the best of her knowledge. So first of all, I have about, I think 17, stop peeping. So let's go. So how did the idea come about for your business? How did you begin? What's the drive? For my business or for my... Your brand, your... Yeah. Are you asking when I, how I started my brand or why how I chose to learn? Idea, why did you choose tailoring, okay. fashion designing? Nothing really, but because in 2016, yes, I remember I woke up one day and I just told my mom, Mommy, I want to do this. And she was like, why? Is there anything, is there anything a problem? Like, okay. is anything bothering you? I said, no, I just feel that I need to leave the house at least my classmates then they all got admission and i was the only one left i just didn't want to feel that pressure of sitting at home okay. doing nothing so you, you're saying that you started your you started tailor you started learning tailoring in 2016 so on to the next question how did you come up with the name for your business you chose Luna apparel you know normally people will be like glam this glam that fashion this fashion that so What's the rationale behind Luna Apparels? Okay, so I think uh, my confirmation name is Cleopatra. So when the I wanted to confirmation on where actually in Catholic Church. Okay. So when I wanted to start my brand, I actually had this Luna Apparels because Luna Apparels Luna is for my name Omwa Luna. Okay, so who gave you the name Omwa Luna? I think my father. My you don't have to think. Our daddy. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my native name, Omoaluna, and it means na picking them they do for yeah, they do for the child. So I had a choice of making use either using my confirmation name or my native name. So I did a poll on WhatsApp and I said House of Cleopatra or Luna Apparels. Everybody was like House of Cleopatra, House of Cleopatra. Ninety nine percent of people said House of Cleopatra. Only two persons said Luna Apparels, and I can remember their name. One is my elder sister. Who is your elder sister? Philomena Major. Oh! <laughs> then the other <laughs> one is Tafik Habib. Okay. Just both of them said, Kudos. Go with Luna Apparels. And I was like, Okay, since just two persons believed in this name, I would go for this because I didn't want something that would be so lengthy in pronouncing so okay something you wanted something that was going to be easy captivating yes, and something exactly. that remember so thumbs up to Tafika Habib and Philomena Major so on to the next question how do you, do you raise funding for your business does your business really need funding 
no i don't think it does because i am I st i'm starting very small i just want to create a name it's for me it's just the passion and the the i want this feeling of people wanting to look good for less okay. i really don't need funding now but in the nearest future you yes. come back so how do you market your brand luna is there any special thing promotions to get people to come and make clothes from you or with you not really about? i think the people who patronize me the people who want to patronize luna apparels Okay. They are coming from other people I make clothes from. Okay. Just like when I design a dress for a person and the girl goes, Ah, Luna made my dress. The other person will be like, Okay, please, I need your tailor's number. And yes, that's how it has been. So, in other words, you have been confirming the fact that a customer is like a tree exactly that has branches and is able to bring more customers so cheers to all the customers who have referred somebody thumbs up to all the customers who have given donors number to other persons yeah. you guys are doing everything so describe your typical day when you wake up in the morning just explain what do you do how do you sew what okay. just explain your day typically mm -hmm. typically when i wake up <laughs> when i wake up I sometimes just jump to the sewing machine. Okay. Or sometimes I, because when I brush, bait, and eat, I would feel lazy. So I start very early. I just wake up and I'm in my sewing machine. I'm in my space. That's just for the record. This girl, before we sleep at night, we sleep hearing the sound of the machine. And um, before we wake up, she the sound of the machine actually wakes us up in the morning. Mm -hmm. So. It's in our nature. Um, the next question should be: How many hours do you work a day sewing? Do you have? I don't do breaks. You just work when you have. A, I just work. You just work to meet customer yes. expectations. What motivates you? What's your motivation? Because a lot of young persons your age, they want to be catching flights. I'm not saying it's bad, though, but most persons are not really eager to build something for themselves you know at your age you're quite young you're 21 i have to just peel <laughs> and um, a lot of persons are still really well i say dependent on a lot of other persons it's not like you're not dependent though. you are dependent but a lot of persons will not really have that drive to say i want to do something i want to start something no matter what happens so what was your motivation First thing says my motivation is my mom. <laughs> yeah, my Juliet. <laughs> like growing up I've seen that hustle for virtually everything and I think that's where I get my drive from. Then secondly, my siblings. These guys. I want to spoil them. Ah in me i'm one of our siblings so i'm going to be spoiled. Premium spoiling. <laughs> so my mom and my siblings. Okay. So what is your greatest fear and how do you manage fear? What do you fear the most in this tailoring business? And how, how what's your what's your tactics? How have you planned to manage it? My greatest fear is disappointment. Disappointing yourself or your clients? My clients. Customers. Because when a person made me realize that disappointing is not just when you fail to give them their clothes on time, okay. it's also when you fail in delivering the particular style they want or they choose. So disappointing my clients is it for me because I don't want a situation whereby the person start complaining that the dress doesn't fit, they don't like how it came out or okay. how it looks. So I don't just like to disappoint. So how do you define success in this tailoring business, in this fashion designing business? How do you define success of you are the tailor now and you have clients? What's your how do you define your success? How do I define my success? <laughs> oh, for the question joke. How do you define success? How what what would you classify that yeah it's I'm not saying until you build houses. That will come. That should be one of the major reasons why you're into business is to make profit. But at this stage, what would you call success? Success for me is when I go out and people be like, that's Luna. Ah, 
that's just it for me. You that's guys. what gets me. Okay, that's nice. Being recognized and yes. owning up to the fact that you're doing something nice, nice. And, everybody and everybody wants to. Okay, that's the girl that did that. That's the girl. So, so what has been your most satisfying moments in this business, in this Luna Apparel business? When I see pictures of clients working my brand. Mm. Because I know I always tell you guys send me pictures, send me pictures. Send us because pictures. I want to brag with you guys and really when I see you wearing something I make, it gives me great joy. Okay, so for those persons that have not been sending you pictures, what well, beg them now? Please, a job. <laughs> Send me pictures. Send out pictures. Uh, so that Let me post a you. young entrepreneur will be satisfied that exactly. ah, my, my, my customer you. is happy. So if you had a chance to change something, or if you have if you have a chance to start again, to start another business, or to if you if you have a chance to start Luna Apparels again, is there something you would do differently? Is there something you would do differently from how you began? Or maybe you can just tell us how you began, where you learned, and all you, what you've learned, okay. where you've been. Where I'm coming from, when I tell people this is where I'm coming from, they do not believe me. Okay. They just feel that, you know, you can't come from this place, but this is where I come from. I come from a time when people didn't even see learning a trade as wanting to be an entrepreneur or to help yourself. Okay. They just feel that, ah, this girl didn't learn trade, they don't get money or they are broke or they are poor i've seen a lot of persons tell me this but learning tailoring for me was just out of my free will and where i'm coming from i started very small i started from a family tailor's place <laughs> and you would really not believe that is where i'm coming from and i have upgraded i have done i came to benin one a certain time like that I learned so how many years did you spend in the first place you started learning I think a year and some months because okay. 2016 I said April or May I can't really remember the month I started then in 2017 I already gained admission so I was just doing yeah, school um, yeah so so it's I think a year plus but you a year two months a year one month that's how long I learned so from, the first, from the first place you went to the second place what year did you go to the second place and how long did you stay there the second place i think the second place was during my one year it okay. i stayed there for a month yes i stayed there for a month and i went back home to practice what i've learned and to equally master my craft so did you learn somewhere else apart from the third apart from the second place yes i did i came back again to a different place to entirely different okay places, to how learn. long did you stay there two weeks okay. <laughs> two weeks and in all this when did you actually start making clothes for people how did you did you did you actually start up having a machine a sewing machine or how did you how did it begin no i didn't really start having a sewing machine okay. at times i would go to my friend's place she stays very close to my house so i'll tell her ah, i'm coming today and she'll be like okay when i get there I, sometimes i meet her walking okay. and it will be improper for me to just tell her to pop out and leave so i have to wait for some time okay before i get access to the same machine there was a time i even went to a friend's place and the next day she called me that that's where my machine ah <laughs> i had to apologize because it's not even really my fault and <laughs> I don't think I caused that because maybe I don't know. So when I just finish from my friend's place, sometimes I just stay to six, then I come back home. Okay, so when did you at what point in this career thing you that you know eventually got your own mission? Mm. How many years into it? You started learning in twenty sixteen. So I think I got my sewing machine in say 2018 september i think i'll have to check okay was it that you saved up money to buy it no, i didn't save up nah, nah, nah. tell us how you got <laughs> machine now <laughs> ah <laughs> tell us that okay, i hope so you so one day you I... are going to be showing us your working space right where you work yes she we have to show us that i will put a video of that
tell us how you got your swim. Your, uh, so I your, was your one and only sewing machine for now. Yeah. So there was a day I went out. I went to my. I saw a friend off. Okay. And when I came back, I met my mom at home, and I was like, ah. I entered the living room. Like, oh, speak up. When I entered the living room, okay. I just saw. Machine. Okay. And I screamed, like Jesus, how? She said that she got it for me and that she wants me to be happy. So your mom surprised you with your sewing machine? Yes, my first Mama, ever. I too and love you, Mama. Mama, I too love you, Mama. <laughs> All this suffer, when you suffer, make me tender. Now so, so better, we got it too for Mama. So thumbs up Gillette, thank you for surprising Luna Apparel's with I do my guy. The one and only machine that she's using now. Yeah. No cap, you're the best. So who has been your greatest inspiration? Who inspires you? Who inspires you? Is it is it are you, do you get your inspiration from all these top notch fashion designers like okay this person did this let me try and replicate something like this what really inspires you yeah a lot of persons inspire okay. me and if i go to my instagram you would not even see a different thing on my news video you always see clothes tailors different a lot of big tailors have actually inspired me i don't call names okay but you guys thank you all thank the retailers on insta that will post mm -hmm. their pictures of their clients thank you so much for inspiring you. a young and vibrant fashion designer yeah. abby okay on to the next question if you had a magic stick which are the three things you would change in the whole world what do you want to change in the world if you had a magic stick money should be free uh -uh. Mm. people should not work for money no ah we suffer too much and people always complain that <laughs> i think we suffer too much we need to relax enjoy okay. and not having to that's one two um, so if you want to say <laughs> money you want money 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 if you want to change the um, things in the world first of all you want money to be free yeah. number two People should love people, value people. <laughs> value that was what the Reverend God had preached just to me. <laughs> it was really, it caught me. When you value people, when you see yourself in people, you won't want to hurt them. Okay. The third one. Mm. One, two, three. Should I? Four. Fine. <laughs> she does not know. I don't know. If you were to write a book about yourself, what would you name it? Being Luna. Being Luna. Nice. <laughs> so how did you get you know learning how to sew from the first time you started learning? You were not making any money. We are just going there to learn carry beans in circular <laughs> fry them by fry them by the junction but how did you make how did you get your first pay whose clothes did you make that you got your first pay how if you can remember i really can't remember who was the first person that paid you for your job maybe you ah yeah. i said maybe it can be misha it can be her <laughs> it can be trauma but i really don't know i really can't place it and by the way she made this thing we we're wearing she made this fabulous abaya that we're wearing so she doesn't really know how to pay that so long i wanted to keep track but thank you to the person that we can believe ah, god bless you believed you. in me god bless you so on to this one let me throw this paper away all the questions were done now the next question is a little bit practical mm, some time ago you were nominated for the edo feast okay edo feast is a platform i think this is the maiden edition to celebrate um people or uh, entrepreneurs or what have you that are from edo state basically or those that have grown from within edo states rising people from edo states 
So you were nominated for Fashion Designer of the Year. Yeah. Just put us through the the whole thing, the whole ceremony. How did it come? What were you doing? How did they call you? So one day I got a message from a client. Okay. And she was like, Ah, there's one thing coming up, and I want to nominate you for it. I was like, Wow, okay, thank you. Because for somebody to nominate you, they actually believed in you. So I said, Okay, and. It got months like I really didn't get a call or a message saying I just felt maybe they had a way of picking and I was I wasn't included. So one day I got a call. The person said, um, "Good morning, good day," and the person said, "You have been nominated for a do fest," and I was like, "Wow, nice." I said thank you. Nominated for what actually? Adi? Fashion designer of the year. Thank you. And they said that my email is not in my Instagram, but they got my phone number from there, so they decided to call me, and they were asking where to send the details to, and I told them, and that was it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how has it been? Like this is your first ever recognition. Will I say? Yeah. <laughs> Nationally, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a first ever big recognition, and. Um, How's the voting process been like? I know people vote online. Yeah, and since it's not a free voting platform, people will be like, I can't vote, I don't have enough cash. And I was like, thank you, because most people just come in my DM and be like, ah, congratulations, I saw the nomination. God bless you, they prayed for me. They said good words. And a lot of persons voted for me, really, because if I should say this, the category they nominated me for is very tight. It's not a lot of strong people. <laughs> it's not strong something people, that people. is easily penetrated. And people will just come and be like, I voted for you, I did this, I don't have money to vote, but I'm praying for you. A whole lot of persons, and I'm very grateful. And to everybody who told me to send links, who posted the links, who begged people to vote for me, who campaigned for me like I'm grateful thank, thank you. you thank you thank so you to much. everyone who voted for thank Nina you. Apparels yeah. as fashion designer of the year you heard from the horse's mouth she's grateful and as a family we say oh, Obeka, oh <laughs> thank you oh, everybody oh, thank you everybody for voting thank you for the repost thank you for everything so today happens to be the um, today happens to be the grand finale for Made in Edo Fest. Yeah, the grand finale for Made in Edo Fest. Today is the award slash dinner night. And um, we're about to start getting ready. And we decided to quickly do this video. We hope, I actually hope to make a video of the process, film the process, just little bits and all that so you guys can get a glimpse of how the ceremony went. I'm going to be adding it to this video. I have to add it to this video. So Luna, thank you. We we'll have to go get ready. Her makeup has to be done. You know, you have to be fine there because you don't know you are going to meet there. So we want to go get ready now for the event. And thank you guys for watching until the next episode comes. Like until I video the next scene. Peace in the Middle East. Thank <laughs> okay, you. Now, see you later.
What happened? 